It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Morio Toyoshima. Dr. Toyoshima is the director of the Space Communications Lab at the National Institute of Information and Communications Technology in Japan. Dr. Toyoshima received his PhD degree in electrical engineering from the University of Tokyo in 2003. He is currently a senior member of IEEE, a member of Optical Society of America, a member of the Institute of Electronics, Information and Communication Engineers, and the Japan Society for Aeronautical and Space Science. His research interests are in satellite communications, space laser communication, laser beam propagation through the atmospheric turbulences, and satellite quantum cryptography. Dr. Tuyoshima received the Minister of Posts and Telecommunications Award in 1996 as part of the ETS-6 Satellite Experiment Group and the annual NASA Honor Award in 1997 as part of the GOLD team. In today's lectures, he will talk about the recent trends and future prospects of the space laser communication. This is becoming a very hot research and deployment topic as space laser communication have been recently verified in orbit by microsatellites, which will revisionize the space systems architecture. Many satellites, mega constellations programs are planning to utilize space laser communication. And with that, I'll leave the floor for Dr. Tuyoshima to give us his, his talk. Thank you very much. Uh, kind introduction for me. So today I would like to uh, present uh, today's talk on recent trends of space laser communication and the future. So I will prepare the presentation. Okay, uh, can you see my screen now? Okay. So uh, I'm Morio Toshima uh, of National Institute of Information and Communication Technology, NICT in Japan. Today, I would like to present a talk on recent trends of space laser communications and the future. So here is the outline of my talk. So first, I introduce a feature of space laser communications. Then I will describe trends of space laser communication missions uh, from Asia and USA and Europe area. And also, I will mention about space laser communication missions for micro and cube and nano satellites. Then I will introduce recent uh, mega constellation programs. Then I would like to conclude my talk. So advantage of space based laser communication is uh, as follows. Of course, uh, large communication capacity so because, uh, for example, 80 gigabytes data can be downloaded uh, around 16 seconds by optical communication. On the other hand, uh, by using the RF communication, it, it will take about uh, 30 minutes. So 50 times wider area can be uh, transmitted. And also uh, antenna size for optical communication can be 20 times smaller than that for RF communication. So optical will have a 10 centimeter cross antenna diameter. On the other hand, RF will have a one or two meter size. So uh, vibrational disturbance also uh, can be uh, reduced on the spacecraft. And also, uh, very high secure wireless communication can be possible if we send uh, RF beam from LEO uh, satellite, for example, the footprint will be uh, uh, two or three kilometer at the X band RF. On the other hand, if we use the laser comb, so the footprint on the ground uh, of the laser beam is just a 10 or 20 meter. So uh, it is uh, essentially really secure. So uh, advantages are a large communication capacity and 
low vibrational disturbance because of a smaller aligner, uh, low power consumption equipment, and also highly secure wireless communication. And also, in addition to this, uh, no regulatory restriction for the moment. On the other hand, there are some uh, drawbacks, uh, like a, a requirement of a higher uh, accuracy uh, tracking. And also, there is a scintillation due to atmospheric turbulence. And also, uh, laser communication is uh, light, so optical. So this can be intercepted by clouds. So on the other hand, so optical technology is expected to revolutionize space system architecture. So here shows the trends of data rate for space laser communication. This, so this shows the launch year of the satellite mission. This shows the data rate. So from the 1990s, the data rate uh, increased uh, by a factor of 1,000 per 10 years. And after uh, decades, so the number of demonstration uh, was double. And maybe from, uh, from now to the future, so wavelength division multiplexing technology can enhance uh, more data rate uh, and like this. And there is another direction uh, from uh, this uh, 20, uh, 2010 or around this. Uh, so there is a stream for the demonstration by using a micro satellite. So the data rate is not so high, but uh, uh, laser communication can be utilized for uh, micro and nano uh, satellites. So now I will show you the laser communication missions uh, in Japan and the uh, uh, Asia area. So NICT, uh, in the past, we called a communication research laboratory, demonstrated uh, world first laser communication mission from geosatellite to ground. This was uh, the uh, engineering test of satellite six, ETS six. So this was done in 1994. So this is a laser communication terminal. You can see a downlink signal from the geosatellite like a spot and uplink signal can be seen as like a needle like this. This uh, was uh, argon laser uh, you can see in green. So one mega BPS was demonstrated in 1994. So after that, so with the collaboration of JAXA, uh, Japanese Space Agency, so this OISET satellite uh, demonstrated uh, world first LEO satellite to ground laser communication experiment. So this is a photo of laser terminal. So in this uh, uh, generation, the mass was uh, about 150 kilogram, uh, very uh, heavy, but uh, uh, laser communication was also uh, successfully demonstrated. This spot is a uh, downlink signal. This uh, line shows the uplink signal. So 50 megabps was demonstrated in 2006. So in China, they demonstrated a QKD mission by University of Science and Technology of China. So they demonstrated a QKD experiment by using this misuse a satellite. And also, they also demonstrated uh, teleportation experiment by using an entanglement of souls on board. Also, uh, Chinese Academy of Science, uh, they demonstrated a five gigabps downlink uh, experiment. Uh, they used uh, Urumuchi uh, ground station. So this is a, a characteristic of bit error rate. 
So they successfully transmitted a high definition image of Shanghai like this by optical signal. And uh, we move on to the missions in United States. So NASA demonstrated a laser, uh, lunar laser communication demonstration called LLCD in 2013. So you can see this is the flight model. So they demonstrated uh, 600 megabps from uh, moon distance. So they used a special modulation, first position modulation scheme uh, for this uh, project. And also uh, NASA demonstrated uh, OPAL's uh, program. So this was the ISS laser communication mission conducted by, uh, so to say, uh, freshmen in NASA. So they uh, developed uh, this system on board ISS. So this is a, a video uh, of the experiment. And also uh, we move on to the missions in Europe. So this is a European Space Agency, a SILEX mission. Uh, so they demonstrated uh, inter-satellite optical link uh, in 2001. So they transmitted uh, this photo uh, of the Balkan Peninsula by optical communication. After this, uh, uh, initial uh, program. So there are many uh, missions in Europe. So one is a uh, uh, Terasa X laser communication mission by uh, German Aerospace Center uh, called DLR in 2008. They onboard uh, their laser comm terminal on Terasa X satellites. Terasa X has a, a synthetic aperture radar sensor. Uh, on board as well. So they uh, conducted 5.5 uh, gigabps with the communication, inter-satellite communication and uh, the link. So now uh, European Space Agency has a really operational data relay satellite system called EDRS. So they already launched uh, several uh, geostationary relay satellite called EDS-A and EDRS-C. Uh, they are already in orbit uh, at the geostationary position. So TSAT uh, company uh, produced uh, this kind of laser communication terminal for this project. So they said uh, 40,000 uh, links already uh, made uh, among several Earth observation satellites. And also uh, recently, this is in Japan, but the uh, uh, Japanese data relay system, JDRS was uh, uh, recently launched. I will explain this. So last November, so JAXA launched these satellites and uh, they are checking uh, health data uh, for the moment. So this satellite will send a 1.8 gigabps. Uh, this is the same rate as the uh, EDRS one. So, but they use a 1.5 micron wavelengths. So you can see some uh, terminal uh, tests under the uh, some acoustic and uh, some vibration environment. And I'll show you a future laser commission now. So I will explain uh, high throughput satellites uh, issue. So satellite communication is aiming for high capacity with lower cost per bit from uh, KU band and KA band, higher RF band. So needs for airborne and ocean usage are really increasing. So high speed, large capacity, high throughput satellites uh, called the HTS needs uh, more than tens of gigabps as a total. So 
which cannot be transmitted via RF uh, wireless communication. So that's why space data communication is really attractive. So there are several HTS programs, uh, for example, Immersat 5. They will have uh, 10 gigabps capacity by using RF. But Biosat 3, they are aiming to have a one terabps capacity around uh, 2021, 2023. So uh, 2020, 2030, so we imagine uh, we need to have a hybrid high throughput satellites, uh, including a KA band and optical feed adding will be needed. So now we are now proposing this system. So I little bit explain this. So this shows a uh, uh, next generation high throughput satellite system. So we provide 100 megabps class uh, user link at the KA band. And also a uh, traffic control can be done with uh, uh, beam uh, flexibility and the frequency flexibility. Uh, this means that digital beam former will change the beam and digital, beam, digital channelizer will change the frequency for each uh, beams. So there are several uh, needs, such as the ocean and airborne case and the disaster case. So if we have, uh, for example, more than 10 users, the total capacity will be uh, uh, more than one gigabps. If we have uh, 100 users, more than 10 gigabps, uh, likewise. So RF communication cannot sense uh, tens of gigabps, uh, essentially. So later communication is needed for this reason. So we are now proposing a hybrid uh, optical and RF feedering system. So we are now developing a 10 gigabps uh, geo uh, laser communication system. So we are now developing this system for engineering test nine. So this will be launched two or three years later, but we want to uh, confirm this function. And also I will mention a little bit the future NASA's plan. So you can see this is a, a chart borrowed from NASA and uh, they want to establish something uh, 100 gigabps cross link and the 10, 10 gigabps user link in the future. So instead of uh, replacing uh, RF communication system to optical. So this is a uh, uh, NASA's future program called uh, LCRD. This is a data relay uh, mission. So they, this will be launched maybe this year. So they will launch a geostationary satellites and back uh, this uh, data relay system. So data rate is a 1.8 gigabps. Uh, so this is the same as that for EDRS or JAXA system. And also NASA plans to have a deep space optical communication mission called the DSOC. So they want to uh, provide deep space optical communication terminal uh, to realize uh, several uh, tens megabps or 100 megabps class. So they want to use a really a big telescope uh, on the ground with a single photon counting detector inside. And they want to use a, a pulse position modulation scheme, which is suitable for deep space communication. And also uh, recently, uh, uh, NASA and the other international organizations uh, tried to uh, make a new uh, lunar program called Artemis. And NASA has uh, several laser communication mission for uh, moon programs. This is uh, one example. They want to uh, onboard uh, laser communication mission uh, EM2. 
So this is a, a, a data rate, uh, 300 megabps will be uh, realized for the moment. And also ISA uh, tried to realize uh, moon village, maybe until 2030. So on the moon, they want to use uh, uh, five megabps LAN on the moon. And also uh, moon and earth will be connected at uh, uh, seven megabps like this. So uh, in the future, more future, they want to connect uh, between Mars as well. And also European Space Agency has a, a plan for the deep space uh, communication mission for uh, Lagrange Point 5 uh, space weather. So this, they want to realize uh, 10 megabps uh, from this satellite. So this is a little bit a uh, uh, busy chart, but uh, uh, I summarized uh, space laser communication program uh, in the past, and here is in the future. So there are several uh, future missions in Asia and USA and Europe. So then I move on to the laser communication missions for micro and cube satellites. So this chart shows a uh, uh, the number of launch of nano satellites. Nano satellites means like a cube sat like this. So uh, we call a one U size nano sat will have a 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube size. So you can see uh, this is a year. So last year, uh, even under the Corona uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. So 162 uh, satellites were launched. But uh, uh, to 2021, more than uh, 600 uh, satellites uh, is, are expected to be launched. So uh, drastically increase. So this is a uh, organization type of nanosatellites. So uh, space activity like this uh, nano satellite, the CubeSat, this uh, were not done by uh, governmental or something uh, institute. So this is uh, more than 50% is done by a private company and also university uh, strongly uh, proceed this uh, technology. And this shows the size of nanosatellites. You can see. So the most uh, uh, cases are uh, maybe three U CubeSats. So you can see uh, there are several types of the uh, satellites which were launched. And also uh, this chart shows the frequency use of uh, nanosatellites. You can see uh, from uh, lower frequency to higher frequency. So for example, this uh, VHF and the UHF, uh, these systems are used for something amateur radio communication. And this S-band, uh, like a two gigahertz. So this is uh, used for uh, uh, telemetry command uh, system. So for X band at uh, eight and 10, gigabit, uh, 10 gigahertz. So this band is uh, usually used for uh, uh, downloading Earth observation satellite data. And uh, you can see there are several uh, higher frequencies, but uh, uh, you, can, you can see double band 75 gigahertz. This has not be, uh, this has not be used uh, uh, so far, but uh, uh, I was a little bit surprised. Uh, this kind of higher frequency is even uh, can, can be used. Uh, and also right-hand side, you can see the laser communication mission. 
So 50 missions are considered, so even on the microsatellite now. So this chart shows the uh, basic communication infrastructure needs for microsatellites. You can see this uh, shows a satellite mass. So ordinate axis shows the data rate. So I plotted uh, RF as black and optical system as a little bit uh, dark red. So of course, innovation vector two is toward this direction because uh, uh, lower mass and higher uh, data rate. So it is really difficult. So for the moment, by RF communication, uh, 100 megabps uh, was already achieved. But by using uh, optical communication, the data rate can be uh, enhanced up to uh, more than gigabit per se. So this is my opinion. But uh, uh, if we uh, overcome this uh, 1 gigabps uh, threshold, so under this, uh, we can still uh, have uh, offline transmission. But uh, above this area, we can realize quasi real time data transmission for the Earth observation satellites because the uh, data can be downloaded vastly at one time. On the other hand, uh, at a, a smaller satellite mass, uh, like a CubeSat and the nano satellites, so they still use a kilo BPS RF link. But the optical communication can enhance also uh, these systems uh, up to a mega BPS. So this is a reason why small and micro satellites uh, need optical communication. So this is an example uh, from my project. So this is called uh, Socrates SOTA project. So we developed five centimeter aperture and uh, around the five or six kilogram laser terminal. So we onboard uh, this to uh, 50 kilogram class micro satellites. So uh, in 2016, we successfully conducted uh, laser communication from this micro satellite. This was the first uh, demonstration by using a micro satellite. So you can see this is a, a picture of the coast of the Australia. So we onboard also a CMOS camera. Then this, this, this data was successfully transmitted by optical communication. So in addition, we successfully conducted a quantum communication experiment just before China activity. So polarization characteristics was analyzed on the ground. So this was published in Nature Photonics. And for the ground station side, we have a one meter optical ground station system like this. So, and also, uh, we initiated international experiment with this SOTA. And for example, there are several international uh, partners, but uh, uh, for the CNES team, tried to establish uh, optical link with adaptive optics. So this is uh, the result. Uh, left hand side, the spot is a little bit deformated, but by using the adaptive optic system, so this deformated signal can be uh, really sharp like this. So signal quality can be improved by using adaptive optics. And also uh, we developed terrestrial free space optical communication network uh, throughout Japan like this. So uh, we distributed 10 uh, sensor stations like this. So we gather real-time uh, data uh, by using uh, several sensors. And also, we develop some optical ground station in uh, Kashima, in Ibaragi Prefecture, and also in Okinawa. So this is just a photo of uh, 
uh, optical ground station, remote optical ground station in Okinawa and Kashima. So this system can be controlled remotely from headquarters in Tokyo. So you can see uh, this, this container can be shifted uh, backwards like this. So then telescope can track the satellites. So this can be com completely uh, done by uh, headquarter uh, uh, from the headquarter in Tokyo. So this is just an example of the effectiveness of uh, data collection system and the cytodiversity uh, research. So we open uh, delivered uh, real-time data on the web for uh, anybody else. So right-hand side shows, this is a sensor station, uh, including uh, whole sky camera and the cloud sensor and humidity, temperature, and so on. So this is one example. So by using uh, this uh, data uh, as offline uh, analysis, so if we use a one grand station each, so we will have a visibility, uh, accessibility from the satellite to ground, uh, less than 50% because of uh, uh, cloud, or rain, and so on. But if we uh, could add some ground station, like uh, two ground station uh, enable uh, more than 70%. And uh, this is the data for the SOTA case, uh, but this is offline. So if we use the three ground stations, so availability from the sat satellite to ground uh, was 100% in this case even under the rainy season in Japan. So uh, as a site diversity, so several ground stations are really effective uh, for this uh, laser communication. So recently, uh, there is a epoch making uh, demonstration. So uh, Aerospace Corporation uh, of United States, so they demonstrated uh, OCSD, uh, 1.5 U CubeSat laser communication in 2018. So they developed this uh, 1.5 U uh, CubeSat. So they launched this satellite and uh, they confirm a successful data transmission from this 1.5 U CubeSat. So everybody recognized, so by using this size uh, satellites can realize, this satellite can realize the laser communication really in real case. So at, after that, uh, we demonstrated uh, optical link with uh, uh, Sony uh, terminal called uh, SOLIS. So Sony developed laser communication terminal, then on board ISS, and we uh, we deliver something uh, uh, optical ground station function to this project. So this was done uh, just last year uh, in April. The successful data communication was uh, achieved. This was the first case by a private company in Japan. And also, uh, we, we have launched uh, this uh, VSOTA mission. So Tohoku University developed develop this light sat, uh, satellite. So we deliver laser communication mission, uh, including a laser driver and just a collimator connected by optical fiber. So the mass is around uh, 700 gram in this case. So, but in this case, satellite has to track the ground station by body pointing. So this was a little bit uh, uh, challenging. So this satellite is now orbiting. We are doing this experiment. And also, uh, we have started uh, laser communication terminal development for CubeSat. 
So this is done by uh, done with uh, Tokyo University. This is just uh, optical design for this uh, system. So I don't mention in detail, but uh, I summarized uh, this uh, movement uh, in chart like this. I mentioned uh, many uh, part of this. So in DLR, they have a uh, several uh, small satellite mission called OSIRIS. And also uh, TNO has a uh, CubeCat uh, small satellite mission and Ukraina and uh, Technical University of Graz and the other uh, university has uh, the same kind of system uh, program. And also MIT Lincoln Lab uh, considering uh, 100, really 100 gigabps uh, T-BAD program. So they want to use a uh, cost uh, technology. And also there are many uh, uh, missions uh, from United States and Spain and China and so on. So they want to use a uh, 6U or 3U or three uh, small satellites to uh, demonstrate something uh, data relay. And also uh, this is a China laser fleet program. They will have uh, around 300 satellites uh, in order to achieve one gigabps by all optical communication network, including a space uh, craft and aircraft. And so this chart shows a uh, trend for quantum key distribution uh, for the satellite. So we did some uh, essential experiments by using SOTA. And China did QKD already. And in, in Canada, uh, they want to uh, proceed a key SAT project. And in Singapore, uh, Spectral, this is a venture company. This was uh, uh, renamed, but uh, uh, they want to have a QKD service. And also in Australia, uh, recently they uh, established something, a private venture company, QT Labs. And also in Australia, they have a QKD plan by using six CubeSat and, and Europe and in UK and Lithuania and China, they have this kind of missions. And then uh, finally, I will describe a little bit the recent mega constellation program. So, you know, SpaceX uh, Starlink already launched uh, many satellites more than uh, 300 satellites. So you can see a nano satellite constellation program uh, from this chart. So there are several Earth observation satellites program and like this. So this chart shows the uh, uh, trends of mega uh, constellations. So I don't want to mention in detail, but uh, O3B already in service uh, by using RF and Huawei. Uh, once was they was cancelled, plan was cancelled, but uh, uh, restarted again now. And the RailSat, this was cancelled uh, 2019. So Starlink already uh, launched more than 800 satellites. So Teletsat plans to have uh, their data relay system. And also uh, Boeing want to use a uh, higher RF band, uh, V band. And uh, ATDO and Kaskiro, uh, this was a little bit, I think a recent rename, but they want to have a 300 sats uh, program. And the laser light communication, uh, they have uh, uh, optical data uh, relay system in order to achieve uh, capacity of 100 terabps. So, and, and these uh, uh, 
for the Earth observation satellite uh, mission, the Terra Vera Planet Labs. Planet Labs already have uh, more than 100 satellites in orbit and so on. And also, uh, there is the Iridium next. They are uh, in uh, operation. And also, uh, there are several IoT and M2M mission by using a CubeSat. But uh, recently, uh, this is Sky and Space is a program by using uh, 3U CubeSat for uh, IoT. But this plan seems to be canceled. And uh, it is uh, really difficult to mention uh, all of the things about uh, recent trends, but uh, there are many the other uh, mega constellation uh, plans from Korea and China and India and Israel and US, Canada and so on. So then I uh, summarize uh, this uh, movement. Uh, this chart shows a frequency map for mega constellation program. Uh, Abushisa shows uh, uh, year in service. The ordinate axis shows the frequency in, this is S band, X band, uh, V band in RF and the optical here. So you can see, uh, basically we can categorize in uh, five area. One is a laser communication, uh, which is uh, today's topic. And the cyber security, uh, for example, by using QKD or something like that. And also uh, broadband satellite communication. This is the uh, biggest uh, market. So everybody I think uh, know already, I think Starlink and Amazon and Facebook, uh, this kind of uh, big, mega constellation programs. And also, uh, this is a imaging uh, market by Planet Labs and Spire and so on. And also uh, IoT M2 M service will be done uh, recently by uh, nano satellites uh, like this uh, new company. So then I will, uh, reprotted uh, the function of this uh, relationship. So Abushisa and ordinate access are the same, but uh, in uh, laser communication, of course, uh, large capacity will be done and the QKD security will be uh, used. Uh, and also this is a uh, promising candidate for deep space and so on. So for broadband satellite communications, uh, I think a cost to use as an issue, but the current market uh, is uh, more than 60% in the uh, this uh, space activities. I superimposed existing geosatellite service uh, in KA band, KU band uh, in this chart. So uh, everybody asks, um, which is winner between a geosatellite service and the real constellation. But uh, uh, there are several uh, merit for uh, both sides. So geoservice satellite operator, will keep, we want, they want to keep their frequency license. So this will not vanish. And also this is an imaging area so market is about 37% for the moment. And also there is a IOTM team service. So this is a suitable for low cost mobile users. Uh, typically a $10 per user, for example. So some uh, airborne service has started. So it is uh, really important to connect this kind of uh, broadband satellite communication uh, market, and also this IO2 uh, M2M 
and also uh, on-ground uh, technology, uh, including uh, SDR, uh, software-defined radio, software-defined network uh, technology, and 5G and adaptive optics and so on. So maybe hybrid satellite communication and the mobile uh, phone and integrate this kind of technology will be very really important, including the optical filtering. So we have to see how to proceed uh, this kind of technology uh, from this uh, trend. So, and also this chart shows the uh, uh, application and the link scenario of space laser communications for mega constellations. So I brought it uh, here uh, for uh, for this purpose. So this is uh, just a satellite uh, service type. And this is a uh, number of satellites uh, for considering the mega constellation aspect. So roughly, we can uh, categorize into uh, five area. Uh, so one is a small uh, duration mission, a short duration mission for uh, something, uh, demonstration and so on for laser communication. And uh, this one is a promising uh, application for geo data relay. So including uh, NASA's LCRD and JAXA's JDRS and also uh, European Space Agency uh, EDRS system and so on. So recently, uh, private company want to have this kind of relay services by using uh, small satellites as well. And uh, this one is the biggest for broadband satellite communication. Of course, this kind of uh, area uh, will be a promising, promising area by Starlink and uh, Amazon and so on. And also, uh, this is uh, uh, something uh, all optical system. Uh, for example, by laser free in China and laser light communications and Sony and so on. And the last one is a uh, area for cyber security, uh, QKD. So uh, I showed uh, many trends by uh, private company, a venture company uh, from worldwide. So these areas are really uh, important for usage uh, of laser communication. So this is just a, a major applications for uh, space laser communications uh, like a, a figure. So this is a, uh, Leo constellation broadband satellite communication. Of course, uh, hybrid HTS will use uh, optical filtering technology and also optical uh, geo data relay. This was already uh, established by European Space Agency, for example, and uh, short duration mission for small satellites and the cybersecurity QKD uh, will be uh, a promising uh, candidate in the future. Also, deep space link is needed. Uh, so this 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 link require high speed uh, laser communication in the future. So let me summarize as follows. So recent trends of space laser communications with micro and cube satellites and also mega constellations were introduced. So after the successful demonstration of Socrates SOTA mission, uh, like a micro satellites, and also uh, OCSD mission, uh, it is recognized that uh, laser communication is important technology for micro and cube and nano satellites. So it is uh, difficult to have the enough RF bandwidth allocation under the many satellite constellation environments in the future. So space laser communication is expected because of uh, currently no regulatory restriction. 
So space laser communications will be a solution to achieve the higher data rate compared with RF communications and deserve the space cybersecurity in the future. So thank you very much for your kind attention. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Toyoshima. Uh, indeed, this is a, a, a very hot topic, and this is, has been represented by all the achievement that has been done so far in, the, in this field. So uh, indeed, of course, it's an exciting uh, uh, research uh, on all the scales. And therefore, we have a lot of people who, who are also working in chaos on the same topic. So we have received uh, quite a bit of questions. I'm gonna summarize them to you uh, one by one uh, as, as we go. So the first question we received, uh, what is the basis mechanism for data transfer using laser? Yes, uh, laser communication, of course, uh, based on the terrestrial fiber network technology. But uh, uh, there, is, uh, several, uh, there are several uh, conditions uh, to use this uh, technology. So in the terrestrial fiber communication network, there is no fading. So there's fading in the RF communication, for example, but uh, uh, for free space communication through the atmosphere, this causes uh, fading in the optical signal. So we have to uh, compensate this fading. So additional technology, for example, uh, uh, forward error correction and uh, something uh, 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 technology for fading mitigation. And uh, uh, as I said before, cytodiversity technology will be needed. So we, if we add this kind of uh, technology to a, a terrestrial fiber network, we can realize this kind of uh, free space or space communication, laser communication technology. Thank you. Uh, are there any commercially available devices which can use this technology, like something in our hands as we can see it today? Yes, uh, this is uh, something uh, uh, transient phase, I think. So, uh, so far, I think uh, uh, the phase was a little bit of demonstration phase. But uh, from now, maybe uh, technology uh, has been a little bit mature, I think. So I think uh, more a few years later, you can buy uh, this kind of uh, commercial system with a lower price. But uh, this is a little bit a transient uh, phase. So if you want to have, but you can, but uh, the price is a little bit uh, rather high uh, still now. But uh, this is a good, good uh, uh, decision phase to use this technology or not. I see. So uh, one more question is about the communication using laser between the satellite and the UAV. Uh, have you worked on this? So you can give us a little bit of insight about uh, the communication between UAV and satellites? Yes. Um, so we have considered a little bit about this uh, use case. So you can, you can imagine uh, over the UAV or even the, for example, aircraft. So the atmosphere is thin. It means uh, uh, turbulence will be reduced. So uh, there's a communication uh, quality between UAV or aircraft to a satellite will be really good comparing with uh, uh, ground to satellite or ground to uh, UAV communication. So this is really a uh, promising, promising uh, uh, scenario to use a laser communication between UAV and uh, satellites or something as uh, UAV and the UAV, uh, inter-UAV communication uh, around the uh, high altitude uh, uh, level. So this will be also uh, strongly uh, considered, I think, in the future. But uh, there is no, uh, there has been no uh, real uh, system so far. 
Okay. In the same context, I think uh, the laser alignment is going to be a challenge. Do you have any comments, especially that these UAVs and satellites are probably moving maybe in opposite directions or in the same direction, but different speeds at different altitudes and so on and so forth, because we are uh, considering this kind of highly mobile systems. What about the alignment issue? Yes. So um, as I mentioned in the presentation, so for example, Aerospace Corporation demonstrated CubeSat, CubeSat uh, uh, demonstration, but uh, the first phase, uh, this was failed because of uh, attitude of the CubeSat was a little bit, uh, <laughs> little bit not, not good. So laser communication needs a high uh, attitude control and also uh, high accuracy orbit uh, calculation and so on. But uh, uh, I think there are many factors, but, uh, uh, but by using current technology, this was I, I can say already served by using uh, high precision attitude control system and uh, maybe uh, up to date orbital uh, elements and orbital calculation or by using a GPS, precise GPS position data and so on. So essential technology shows this can be feasible, but uh, uh, it is really difficult to reduce the cost for the moment. So if you can use a very high uh, expensive, really high precision uh, equipment, you can do this even now, but uh, everybody cannot do that. So the issue will be, will be I think, uh, how to reduce, how to reduce this kind of uh, uh, cost and uh, for example, miniaturizing, miniaturizing system for easy use uh, by uh, customer, I think. So essentially, uh, tracking and this kind of uh, technology were already uh, solved. solved. Uh, so, but uh, how to choose what uh, precision system or sensor and so on. So you can trade off. Uh, this kind of system. Thank you. So this brings me to the last question that we have uh, from the audience. Uh, and it's relevant to the recent slides that you've just mentioned about the deep space communication. So one is asking about, can we really deploy uh, with high power laser uh, a channel that can go to, uh, for example, a remote operating vehicle on Mars? From, from the upper orbital area of, the, of, 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 of Earth or no? And how feasible is this and how it is possible to be done? Yes, uh, principally, uh, already NASA already uh, considered this kind of system. So uh, not so high, but the high power laser communication system like a pulse laser can be, can be on board, but uh, we cannot uh, increase the onboard mass and the power and size because of uh, really expensive to launch to uh, uh, Mars or something like that. But uh, uh, in cooperation with the uh, ground station technology, for example, uh, to increase the uh, receiving aperture on the ground and, and so on. So there is a compromise point uh, to achieve uh, possible deep space mission in the future. So um, I think there is a all, uh, now really uh, uh, possibility to realize this kind of system for the deep space mission. I see. So uh, really thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tuyushima for this insightful and eye-opening, uh, very exciting and really comprehensive uh, talk about uh, laser communication using satellites. So uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much for, uh, for being with us today. And I would like to thank also all of the audience around the world who are, uh, really uh, joined us in the WorkHoust uh, Web for 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind attention and participation. Thanks.